ugly, recognizing that we're going to have good days with at home, things are going to go really well, we're going to have bad days at home where things are not great, but we're hanging in there, and then there are going to be days that are just ugly. Um, and so trying to think about sort of what are some different strategies and tools we can use for those times. So we'll start out here with the good. Um, the spoiler alert, validate, validate, validate is the beginning of all of these slides um, because validation for young people is so important. Um, validation, right, says I see you, it says I hear what you're saying, I, I'm present with you and your experience. Um, and especially right now when there are so many experiences that are new or challenging or there's a lot of should I or am I doing it right, um, this is a really good way to show the show your kids right that you're that you're there with them so sometimes it's great wow that's awesome how exciting um also right when things are going well that's a great opportunity for positive reinforcement thanks for taking out the trash like i noticed that you put the dishes in the dishwasher like thanks for doing that um you know noticing i noticed that you got up and like had breakfast like at the time that we talked about that's awesome whatever they are um, and I think circling back to David's point earlier, generating positive experiences, right, whatever those new rituals and routines are, whether it's family game night, dinner together, new baking skills, um, all of those things, but generating those positive experiences together helps build that resiliency that will help you weather some of those not so great um, experiences. And then the last piece of this, right, is that when things are going well, this is the opportunity to plan for the future challenges you know are coming. Um, so on the day when people are well rested, everyone um, is having a good, you know, having a good day so far, um, people are enjoying each other's company, this is the moment, right, to talk about what are some of our boundaries, to be clear about communicating them um, and things like that. So Jen, you wanna go to the next slide. Um, this is kind of a way to talk about what I would call a, a communication plan. Um, here are some questions. I made a little worksheet. I am not going to tell you that your high school student is going to be jazzed about completing a worksheet. They will probably roll their eyes at you. Um, and that's okay, right? Um, there's a reason why, you know, in housing programs and when your kids might go off to college, the, they're going to complete a roommate agreement. And there's a reason why people do that. It's because it's really helpful. Um, and a lot of those questions, right, that you might want to think through are, how do I let somebody know when I need interruption free time? We have more people in houses, right, who might be needing to use similar spaces. Um, how do I like to be interrupted when I'm by myself, right? We think about the routine of school, right? Kids get passing periods, they get transition time in our new land. If you're playing video games for a couple of hours and then it's like dinner time and you didn't get any sort of transition time, that might be jarring. Um, how do I take a break from a conversation when I need to step back? Um, but then also the positives, right? Like what makes summer feel like summer? If summer, if it makes it feel like summer to have ice cream, then make sure that you have ice cream, right? Like what is the thing that sort of helps people feel like summer, summer wasn't canceled totally. Um, that's when it's all going great. Sometimes it's not. Um, and so that, Jen, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, that's okay, right? This is really hard. Um, you know, just as was shared, right? There's a lot going on in the world. Um, maintaining physical distancing from other people for a long time is really hard. It's not only hard for young people, it's also hard for their parents. Um, and so it's okay that it's, it's okay to struggle. Um, our clinical director and her family talks about um, what they call the Corona cranks, um, which I really love is just a way to talk about like, sometimes it's just like a bummer um, and sitting with that idea that it's okay to struggle. And so I wanna share a couple of sort of ways to look at that. Um, again, the first is just validating that, right? Even naming something like the Corona Cranks is just a way to validate that sometimes this isn't great. Um, so statements like, it makes sense that you feel angry about that. That's so disappointing. I get why you're frustrated. This isn't what you planned. Um, we can validate our kids' emotions, right, without validating their behavior. So just because we're saying, I get why you're frustrated. This isn't what you planned doesn't mean it's okay that you like, I don't know, like walked out of the room and slammed the door or whatever. Um, we always like to remind people of um, another acronym, we love acronyms, um, of HALTS, right? So hungry, angry, lonely, tired, and stressed. When people are these five things, they are the least likely to be able to hang in a, com a difficult conversation. Um, so wanting to check in with ourselves, right? When we are feeling short or frustrated with our kids, right? Or when they are feeling short or frustrated with us, 
Um, have people eaten? Did people get a good night's sleep? What else is going on, right? And recognizing that most people are feeling some version of lonely, angry, and stressed kind of all the time right now. Um, and so we might not be operating at peak efficiency. Um, similar to what Brian was talking about, right? As parents, you can own your experience, right? I can tell that I'm feeling really edgy today. I'm gonna take a break. That's a really great opportunity to model for young people what it sounds like to be struggling um, and then taking care of ourselves. We can also try to give power um, to our kids when we can, right? So sometimes we share our negative feelings because we're looking for advice or we're looking for help. Sometimes we're just sharing our negative feelings because we just want someone to know that it's unfair, right? Or that it doesn't feel good. And so sometimes it's helpful to just ask, right? Do you want my help problem solving this or is it more helpful if I just listen? Um, and remembering to do that, right? Um, for our kids so that they get some agency around what's next. And then observing and wonder aloud. I, I love the tool of wondering aloud with young people because um, it helps them build some self-awareness, right? And helps them build that resiliency that Brian was talking about. I'm noticing that you're really tense. I wonder if you're feeling stressed. Um, you know, when you see your kid, when you notice that your kid is slamming the cabinet doors, like I'm noticing that the doors are loud right now. I'm wondering if something's going on, right? They don't have to answer. It's not a direct question. You're just observing for them what's going on. Moving forward to what we, what I would call the ugly, right? So this is in the moment, right? When you're like, there is active fighting going on, whether that is, you know, silent treatment or angry, right, whatever, like, or yelling, whatever anger looks like in your home, right, or when people are really stressed or really frustrated. Um, again, a reminder that we can always start with validation. I can tell you're really angry. It's clear this is important to you. Um, sometimes, right, we get angry and we get loud because we feel like we're not being heard. Um, and so recognizing that we can always offer that validation as a place to start. Um, reminding ourselves of halts, right, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, stressed. Checking in with yourself. Where are you on that sort of health spectrum? Where do you think that your young person is? Um, when people are angry, right, taking breaks when you need them is really, can be really helpful, right? That sort of break to cool down. Um, it's also important, right, to let your kid take breaks too. So if they are feeling really frustrated, um, making sure that it's okay for them to step up to step away from the conversation, but it's helpful to have a plan on how to return to that, right? So this could be something you talk about in your communication plan um, about how you're gonna handle breaks when people are like in conflict. So maybe we're both really frustrated, let's plan to talk about this again at X time, right? So, you know, it's 10 a.m., let's plan to talk about this at two, or let's plan to talk about this over lunch. Um, I need to cool off. I'm going to blanky, blank, 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 whatever that is for you. I'm gonna take a walk, I'm gonna, you know, sit outside on the back deck for a minute or whatever is true for you. Um, and again, modeling that for young people, right? What does it look like to take a break? What does it look like to state your needs clearly to say, I need to cool off. Here's how I'm going to handle myself, right? Because what that gives young people the opportunity to do is to say, yeah, I need a break too. I'm going to do this other thing. Um, a friendly reminder, right, to fight fair. So stay in the here and now um, and save conversations about patterns of behavior for a set time. So, you know, this kind of goes with that second bullet of avoiding absolutes. So we don't say you always, you never. Um, nobody likes to hear that when they're frustrated or when they're really angry is not a great time to be like, you've been snapping at us all day, right? Is not a helpful thing. Um, that's a great conversation to have when things are going well. Um, and also write a reminder to avoid name calling and comparisons. I think we all know that these are helpful, right? But avoiding saying, well, your brother is able to wake up on time, why aren't you? Um, is not mo the most helpful, right? Because it's focusing on how someone is falling short in comparison to somebody else. Saying all of that, sometimes we say things like that that we know we shouldn't say, right? Um, and it's okay that that happens. Just say you're sorry when you need to. Um, and just a reminder that even as adults, we mess up too. So I was really hard on you earlier. I'm sorry, I know you're doing the best you can. Um, you know, like I, I shouldn't have compared you to your brother, that wasn't fair. Um, I know your situation is different. Let's talk about what that's gonna look like. And just making sure that you remember as a part of that, right, to let it go. You don't need to berate yourself. You don't need to, you know, sort of sit in it all summer long. This is right to give yourself some grace while we're doing this kind of intense communication about boundaries 
um, and having those really hard conversations with young folks. And so for updated information on our mental health programming, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, or find us at catchescommunity.org. Catch is dedicated to making a difference in our community through empowering families to raise resilient and independent